Okay, what we do is we have developed a technology to be able to place windmills in deep water, far from the coast, to, to uh, deal with the concerns people have of negative visual uh, uh, pollution, but also to pick up better winds. Most of the world's seas are actually deep water close to the coast, um, uh, uh, but the, the current industry is focused around shallow water uh, deployment because the North Sea happens to be shallow far out, but it's only something like 10% of the world sees are that way. So we are working on a solution, a technology which allows us to deploy in deep waters to float the windmills. We launched the world's first floating prototype platform, the three-quarter size, off the coast of Italy, some 20 meters from the, 20 kilometers from the coast in 120 meters of water. Uh, we did that at the tail end of 2007 and deployed in, in 2008, and we've subsequently uh, decommissioned that unit. And we're currently building a two megawatt unit in Italy to deploy in the same area to be able to prove the technology. Innovation is a tough thing. Uh, everybody wants innovation, they certainly want the results of innovation, but to actually build a business bringing innovation to the marketplace is quite an extraordinary challenge. Every step of the way, whether it be your technical suppliers or particularly your funders, you are asked to give proof statements of something which is obviously not yet proven. And at every step of the, le uh, the way, it seems that okay, that proof statement wasn't enough, so what's the next one? And you're constantly fighting conventional wisdom. If conventional wisdom and conventional technology was always right, you wouldn't have innovation. So innovators are trying to go against conventional wisdom by default, and yet it's very tough to bring it out into the open marketplace. I believe it's to undersell and not oversell. It's to, it's to show enthusiasm for your own solution, but not push the boundaries of the claims underclaim rather than overclaim and bring the skeptics with you by just showing them a little bit of the solution and the proof statements which back that up. There are tremendous lobbies which work against eco-innovation um, and one feels the power of that. There is the, the fact of the software bubble in the early part of the 2000s, which kind of has a reflection on the eco bubble, which was sort of building and growing in 2007 and, and the first part of 2008. And people are feeling, okay, this is another software thing, and, and maybe it's, it, it's temporary in it, and it hasn't found its place yet. And there is the skepticism which surrounds this whole industry. Many companies consider that they are involved with eco-innovation simply for the green flag on their business card, where it has to be real, otherwise we don't find the solution. So how do you overcome that? Um, by putting a disproportionate amount of effort into what we do.